young and you're, you stick out visibly. Naturally and just by your own, your own design. Meaning, when you leave your house, people watch how you look, how you, how you dress, and your mannerisms. And then they equate it in their head as to what they've seen before. Meaning, when you walk out of your house, and your mannerisms are, and yo, yo, or you're laughing for no reason, or what is what should be, should be considered not something to laugh at, now they're looking, looking at you like, you don't have any sense. Now we're going to treat you like you don't have any sense. And I'll bet you, if you are put into, in a position where you need to be able to think and articulate yourself, you're not going to be able to do it. And that brings me right back to the beginning of the conversation. You're going to be treated just like a nigger. I can't say that. I, I, I can back up for them. Because that's not just you. There's some people that you can see on the street dressed like a thug, yeah, Ray Tay Tay, but they know all their rights, they know what they're doing exactly. Mm -hmm. You can't just judge somebody on their appearance. Even though, yeah, we've been judged by white men upon our appearance, mm -hmm. Not it doesn't mean that you guys should tell us that we're going to be judged by our appearance. Because appearance can mean a lot of different things. Like, you can't. We look at a book and just tell that it's good or bad by its cover, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I'm glad that you said that. Okay. Just, just, just to reiterate what, what the brother said, that he, he's not saying you can't dress like that. He's saying that people have, have a mentality that goes with that dress code in their head already without even knowing whether you're a good guy, whether you get A's, B's, or whatever. They, what's already in their mind is what they're using to say that you're a nigger. Not whether you're good or not. You know what I mean? Like, he's not bashing, dressing, you know what I mean? Dressing like a thug or whatever. If you want to wear a hoodie, well, like, I got hoodies. You know what I mean? It's not a sense of, of um, trying to, you know what I mean? Get you to change your wardrobe. Or, or, you know what I mean, you have to wear a shirt and collar and whatever. But people have already have a perception in their mind with regard to certain dress codes. Just like if you see a man on the bus and he's, he has a black belt knotted on his waist, you already know that he's in some martial arts school or something. Right? If you see a um, man come on the bus with yellow hard hat and, and boots, dirty, muddy, you already know that that man's in construction, right? But the spectrum of, of, of how you young people dress, is, it's not broad. Like the spectrum is, that's what he's saying, that you're easy to get pointed out, right? Because my brothers don't even not wear a hat. There's some brothers that wear a hat all the time. <coughs> you know what I mean? I want, to, I want to expand on that a little bit because it's really important because I, I want to make sure that you guys come away with, without thinking that I'm trying to put you down. That's not the purpose of what I'm saying. What I'm trying to make sure you guys understand is that you have choices. And your choices come with a reaction, a consequence. It could be positive, it could be negative, okay? And it all depends on who's interpreting, interpreting, interpreting the choice you make, right? Take, take for example, a uniform. The purpose of a uniform is to identify a person. Identify a, 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 what the purpose of a person, okay? A police officer wears a particular uniform, and it has particular things on it. So you make no mistake about it, that's a police officer, make no mistake about it that he has the authority to do what the law claims he's allowed to do, depending on what you do, and justify, okay? Yeah, um, I, this discussion really sometimes made me want to shed two tears. I mean, we're the only people who have this discussion with young people because Young people are not allowed to bring up themselves. So the minute we're engaged in discussion with young people, whether we're using whatever the word is, they should have gone through rights. They should have been in the incubator and what it is to be African. 
Because if you do that, uh, some people might heard you say more. But at the end of the day, if you come to the incubator, you know you don't wear your pants down. Because you can't even run if somebody trying to shoot you. Who wears the pants down like this? Last time I see a guy running like this. Sit down here. <laughs> I'm keeping a fire and shot. It doesn't make sense logically. But <coughs> you shouldn't burn yourself up. <coughs> That's the bottom line. When you're 11, 12, you should be going through what it is to be a man. The, the village teach you that is to be a woman. The woman take the young women and teach them how to be a woman. And then when you grow up now, we don't live by accident. You grow up accidentally with BET and block exploitation experience. And madness. And Lil Wayne and Philly. And M and M. I start throw away M and M's. I put it in the water and make it melt. You see? So in these discussions, how do we decide to open by the incubator and put you in, especially you young men? put you in and teach you how to be a man. Because if we did that, what happened tonight would never happen. You understand? When I'm in Ghana, I'm in a village, madness don't happen. I never hear a little boy in Ghana tell your older brother, move. I never hear no name. I don't hear no B's, no O's, no L's or H's. Because young people learn. And when I'm speaking, they wouldn't be talking because they would be listening. You see? So that's the piece I want to work with these young people in. So the next Kwanzaa, we work with them in the rights of places so they know how to be. I'm sure my brother is ready. Where's my other brother? This brother over here. We're ready. Let's do some work in that area because I think that's the piece. And then when we have the conversation again, we can keep going. Ashe, Ashe. So let me acknowledge something. I want to acknowledge the space in the room that we Everything that's happening here tonight can only happen because we are continuing for it to happen. This is where every conversation that needs to happen can happen. Because I'm here, like the elder said, not because I'm upset with you or I think there's something wrong with you or you need to fix it, but because there was somebody there for me and it's my duty to pass it on. I can't, like, you, like elder said, leave anyone to bring themselves up. That's why we have parents and right? parents. There's some people who have to bring themselves up. You're fortunate that even if you don't have someone in your life, there's someone in the community that cares about you, that wants to know what is happening with you and wants to create a space for you to come. And however you are is fine because you have to be where you're at to get wherever you're going. So, yes. Just one. I just wanted to say as well, the main purpose of Kwanzaa, right? The main purpose of Kwanzaa as I see it, the, the principles is to bring us back to where the brother said as to where we were. Who we were as African people, who we were as Moorish people, our accomplishments. We weren't niggers, we were the world. You go to Hyde Park, you go to Queens Park, those are our gardens. The word cotton is an Arabic word. That's our clothes. The only people to, the people who gave the Europeans clothes, you see the kente on the wall, is us weaving. We brought them clothes. The movie, there's a movie called Robin Hood with Morgan Freeman in it. Watch that very carefully. One of the critiques of the movie was it's wrong because they had posters, wanted posters on the, on the trees saying they're looking for Robin Hood. And people said it, it's an impossibility. Because the, the Moors were not yet in Europe, there was no paper there. We brought paper to Europe. We brought writing to Europe. We brought numbers to Europe. We brought food. Asparagus comes from Africa. Sugar, coffee, yes, tea. Asparagus, Google it. As an African Muslim brother, North Africa. Coffee, tea, bread, wheat, corn, teff. The world is ours. We are not niggers, we're not thugs, we're not hoods. You know, people think when you dress with your pants out of your, your, your hood, you're not a hood. You're just somebody they're making money from. You know who the, the thugs are? Wall Street, the bankers. They make billions of dollars. You know what I heard a brother say today? General Electric got a tax credit for the government for three and a half billion dollars. Little Wayne don't make no money. Little Wayne's working 
for a company owned by Universal. Rappers don't make no money. Doctors don't make no money. You don't make money if you're in Tanzania, if you're in Ghana, and you own the mine, the gold mine. Ghana is the gold coast. That's where the gold is from immemorial. If you own that, you're the man with the money. They're working for you. The lawyer works for you. So as African people, we have to reclaim who we are. Men and women reclaim our heritage. Go and Google and see who the more is. Every single thing in this world that they claim, glass, eyeglasses, planes. The Temple of Dendera in Egypt, go Google it, the Temple of Dendera in Egypt, has a picture of a helicopter, of a submarine, of a tank, about 10,000 BC. This is who we are. Don't try to be a thug. Try to, like the brother says, what is our purpose of life? We have to aspire for the greatness that we are. What they have done is degraded us to make us think that you're niggers. Afro, we didn't make no money Afro. We didn't make no money off the Afro pick. We don't make no money off anything. Shea butter, ask Brother Sankofa. You go to Ghana, you go to Burkina Faso. Shea butter has been there for a million years with us. The brothers in walk, cook with it and whatever. This is our stuff, so this is what we have to do. You know there's shea butter in, in Wa. People are going to school to learn Chinese. There's nothing in China. There's nothing. It's not a joke. There's nothing in China. All the Chinese do is go to Africa, get minerals, make it into everything we have on, and they're selling it. Why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we going to Burkina Faso and making shea butter, shampoo, soap, whatever, toothpaste, and we sell it? Then, then you know what? Then you hire little Wayne to a milli, 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 and everybody think he's somebody. He's nobody. That's a drop. That's not even money, bruh. A billion dollars is not even money. This is the whole point. They need a piece of doing the papers. Uh, that's what that's how that's, that's, that looks like on their music deal. But it's but it's like a drop. It's not even. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's, like, it's nothing. It's like doing a job of doing delivery papers and piece work. Thank you. The uh, one time, who was the richest rapper? Too short. You know what Too Short was doing? When he made a CD, when he made a cassette, he would sell it out of his trunk. Yeah. So when you se listen to this now, you sell the CD for ten dollars. It costs you 50 cents. So you make $9.50. When you go to Universal, they pay you 33 cents for a $15 album. All the brothers, uh, Jim Jones says he's on Koch. When you're on Koch and you sell 100,000 units, but there's a, there's a point, that's what you think. But if you're on Koch and you sell 100,000 units on Koch, you're making as much as Jay-Z, who's selling like five million, because Jay-Z's making 33 cents. The man who has purpose, who knows who he is, you control your own destiny. You can, this, is what, this is what Kwanzaa is. Nia, purpose, collective work in economics, working together, supporting one another. If you do not support your own, you're done. That's why we are in this position. Ashe. 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 Ashe.